Everyone always talks about beta readers this, beta readers that. I don't know what that is, Well, I'm going to tell you today. Before we get started, hey, my name is Emily and I make writing and bookish content here on YouTube. So today I want to talk to you about beta readers, what they are, how you can use them, and how to like prepare them and go through the whole process of beta reading your, your novel. Or if you want to become a beta reader, ways that you can do that. Also, I'm going to apologize for my voice in advance. I'm still getting over this cold, but... Let's just get into it. So if you want the dictionary definition of what a beta reader is, that is basically someone who reads a work of writing, a book, whatever, uh, before it's published. And they work with the author to tell them about errors in their book, or they suggest improvements, often without receiving payment. The payment that the beta reader receives is the reading of the book. And sometimes authors, if they have the funds and the ability, they'll send them, you know, promotional things. They'll send them a free copy of the book when it's finished. You know, you can do stuff like that. But the standard is that there's not a real payment for being a beta reader. I have beta read for multiple authors before, and I have loved the experience. I've worked with amazing authors, and I have also had beta readers for my poetry collection, and they were also amazing. The process for my, like, poetry was, I think, very different than what it it would be for a full length novel, um, just in terms of time commitment and the things that you would want to be asking. But I think the principle of it is overall the same. So if anyone can really be a beta reader, you don't need to have any sort of specific background in writing or reading or anything like that. You just have to be someone who loves to read and wants to help out an author. Normally, if you're an author, you want anywhere between like three and like 15. That's like pretty high. 15 beta readers is a lot. Um, I would say like under 10, but 15 is probably like the cap. Um, and you want, you want at least three because you want to have different opinions, different views on your book. And three, normally, if you have like someone who says one thing and another person says another thing, but if you have the third person, they normally break that tie. So like having an odd number can be really helpful. But you want to make sure that you're getting a decent amount of feedback when you're going back and editing your book. You would normally start looking for beta readers after your first draft is finished before you hire an editor. Uh, because when you hire an editor, you're paying them sometimes lots and lots of money. And if you are going through beta readers first, a lot of the time they can help point out and help you fix things before uh, you send it to an editor who's just also going to tell you the same sorts of things. So you can just kind of like have your book at the next level before paying an editor. And you want to make sure that beta readers are people that you can trust and people that will give you an honest opinion and feedback on your book. A lot of people will go with friends and family if they don't have a big circle of, of readers to choose from. And that's totally okay as long as they're going to give you actual feedback and that they read the genre that you're writing in. But you can also talk to other authors or other reading and writing groups and see if anyone wants to beta read. Um, a lot of people are really nice and cool about it. I've seen people like ask on TikTok even uh, for beta readers for their books. So there's lots of different ways that you can find people. You just want to make sure that the people who are going to be beta reading your book that they read in the genre and like the kinds of things that are in your book. So if you have someone who typically only reads, you know, contemporary fiction or nonfiction, you wouldn't want them to necessarily beta read your high fantasy novel. Sometimes having that point of view can be very helpful, but a lot of the times from beta readers, the kind of feedback that you want you're going to want from the kinds of people who would be picking the book up off the shelf at the bookstore. Beta readers, in a way, are like practice readers. They're people who are going to give you feedback as someone who would be buying your book from the store, someone who would potentially just be a reader of your book. So that's why they're so, so important. And that's why we love beta readers. Beta readers are important for people who want to be traditionally published. If you want to get eyes on your book prior to sending it out to agents, if you want to get some feedback on your novel, um, but it's not required. For indie authors, it's normally a really, really, really good idea to use beta readers and to use them to the best of your ability because they're going to be a really great way to get readers' eyes on your book prior to sending it to an editor. Versus when you're going traditionally published, you're going to have a lot more eyes on your book through the publishing house and your agent and everything. You're going to be working with lots of editors, but you don't have to pay for those editors and those people looking at your book. So when you're an indie author and the money is coming straight from you, and you want to be frugal with your funds because I know that like the world is expensive right now and editors deserve to be paid 
their worth. But if you want to get the full effect and the best bang for your buck, um, having beta reader feedback is going to be really important to get a lot of the the big issues out of the way so that when you're paying for your editor, you can just focus on the like small important stuff that's really going to heighten your book and the content in it. Because it'll be really easy for beta readers to be like, this character, really inconsistent. And this dialogue is really clunky. And then to just go back and fix that. And then your editor can be like, okay, so we're looking at the world building, these like very specific things. Like let's really polish this and make it shine. So beta readers, super important, super great. We love them. Another thing you can do is um, if you have other author friends who are also writing novels, you can like manuscript swap with them so like and kind of beta read for each other like that's just another way to find friends um and people to read your book um but then also you would be beta reading for them and that's also a really good experience to be on the other side of it because you can see the kind of feedback that would be really helpful for other authors um but also like i think it's a really good experience to also be a beta reader if you're gonna have beta readers because you'll understand exactly the kind of time constraints the energy that's involved in beta reading and just kind of the whole thing. So I also really recommend that. I also want to point out, this is really important, is that beta readers are not sensitivity readers. And people who beta read can sometimes also be sensitivity readers. However, they shouldn't necessarily overlap because they're looking for two different things. The beta readers are going to give you feedback from a reader's perspective on the world, the characters, the plot. I'll get into that more later. So a sensitivity reader is going to read your book and point out any sort of like racial biases you might have, or if anything in your book is particularly offensive or portraying really harmful stereotypes against a group of people. This is really, really important if you are writing a book and including characters that have experienced the world in a different way than you. And actually, it would be really important to probably have multiple sensitivity readers. Um, and that's just a really good way to make sure that your book is representing people in the best way and most truthful way and in a way that is not harmful to communities. Another difference between sensitivity readers and beta readers is that you're probably going to pay a sensitivity reader because they're reading it not necessarily out of pleasure. Beta readers hopefully are enjoying your book and it would be hopefully fairly similar to just reading a book they would want to read anyway. However, sensitivity readers are going out of their way to research or do the emotional labor of reading your book. They normally also write you like a report and they, they talk to you about certain things. So it's a really, really important if you want your book to be authentic, true, and not be harmful to communities. So I could probably make a whole video on sensitivity readers. Um, maybe I will at some point, but it's just really important. Your sensitivity readers are not your beta readers. When you're preparing your beta readers to read your book, one of the nice things that you should do is provide them with an estimated reading time. People on average read 200 to 250 words per minute. Uh, so you should take your word count and divide it by 250, and that'll give you how many minutes it'll take to read. And I think you divide that by 60, and then you get hours or something. I'm not sure. But it's a really good idea to include an estimated reading time because we're all busy. We all have lives. Beta readers are normally doing this for free. They're doing it because they love you or they want to support you. So being upfront with about how long, how many hours it's going to take to read your full manuscript is important because if they're working full time or they have other stuff going on, you know, if it's going to be 10 hours to read your book, you know, that's something that they probably want to know ahead of time before they take on this for you. I know. So with my book, Love Letters from Hades, I think I had about 85 poems in that book and they were all very, very short. So I told people, you know, that, you know, it's about 80 to 90 poems. It's probably going to take you an hour, hour and a half to read in full. And people were really chill about that. I think that's a little bit different than like, if you have a hundred thousand words, you're probably looking at like six to eight hours of reading time. So it's a, it's a little bit of a different commitment, but I think it's really important that people are aware of that upfront when they are going to do this for you. The next thing I would say is definitely provide them with a deadline because, People love to procrastinate. I'm like that. Uh, and, you know, life gets in the way. And I think having a deadline uh, is really important. I did not do this with, with my last book, I'm pretty sure, because I was just like, whatever. <laughs> um, but I think like with my next one, uh, I would definitely do that, where I think normally people give their readers two to three weeks to read their, their book. That normally is enough time for them to read the book and kind of collect some thoughts on it and get back to you, um, depending on the length of your book and how you know hefty it is. But I think two to three weeks is a good guideline and just let them know, hey, I want your feedback within this time frame. 
thanks. And, you know, you can remind them a week before the deadline, hey, just so you know, you have one more week. But I think that clear communication and expectations of your beta readers is really important. Um, but it's also important to remember that they are doing this for free and out of the goodness of their hearts. Being kind and good about it. I've never had a bad experience beta reading, but I think like having open communication and being honest is really important. The next thing you'll want to determine is how you're going to send it to them. I'm in Belgium and so it's very hard when all of my friends and like readers are in the U.S. to give them physical copies, uh, like printing it for them. That's pretty hard for me to do. I can't just like hand it out to them. I normally do online. And I think the best tool for something like this is going to be Google Docs. This is the same way that I I beta read uh, was through Google Docs where they just share a document with you. You'll probably have one, a different document for each reader, and then they can add comments as they read. They can point stuff out. They can highlight stuff. They can make suggestions. So those are all like, I think Google Docs is probably one of the best ways to do it. Um, and that allows you to send it, you know, to anyone, anywhere, no problem. I also think it's important. Uh, I like didn't mention this before. Beta readers also aren't proofreaders. They're not there to like fix your grammar. Um, that's also like an editor's job, but I suppose if they see something, they can, they can like point it out, but like make it clear that like they're not there to fix your like sentencing mistakes. It's just like added work for them that they don't need to do. Next thing that's really important is going to be asking specific questions. Um, if you don't want their answer to how did you like my book to be, it was great. Thanks. You're going to want to ask specific questions. So like, were you confused at any moments? What pages? Why? Were there chapters that you were bored or that you felt like didn't fulfill the promises of this book? Why? Um, you know, was the plot twist uh, engaging? Did, did you guess it right away? Was it hard to guess? Did it come out of nowhere? What were your favorite characters? Why? Were there any moments that were really, really confusing and hard to follow? Did you connect with the characters emotionally? Did you cry? Did you laugh? Did you, you know, just these kinds of specific questions and then you'll get better answers from your beta readers. You should have comments in your Google Docs and they can comment on things as they read, but then also maybe having specific questions that they can answer in an email to you is also really important. After they've finished reading the manuscript, they can give you like an overview of their thoughts. And just a note for any author putting their work out there ever is like, prepare yourself mentally to receive feedback that isn't nice. <laughs> if your beta readers are doing their job, they're going to be giving you honest feedback. Though that does not mean cruel or rude feedback, just honest feedback. And sometimes, you know, when you've spent hundreds of hours working on your story and someone tells you this part wasn't great, sometimes that really hurts. Or if someone doesn't love your main character or they didn't connect emotionally, sometimes hearing that can hurt. And it's important to realize that that is really important information coming from your readers. And I think the most important thing that you can do is to be curious about why and how you can fix it. That's going to help you navigate the editing process. So if they're saying that your main character wasn't likable to the point where they hated them and they hated listening to them, ask them why. Was it the character's voice? Was it that they were unmotivated or that the text wasn't supporting what they were doing? Those are all really important things that are easy to change and that will make your character stronger. So just like being prepared to hear those things is really important and that it doesn't necessarily reflect poorly on you as a writer or an author, just areas to improve. And that's the kind of feedback that you want anyway. If your beta readers are all telling you, it's great, I have no notes, there's probably a reason and it's that they're not thinking hard enough about the text or they're afraid of hurting your feelings. So again, having that clear, open communication and being willing to hear that feedback is really, really important. And it's what's going to help make your book better. And I think as a beta reader, if you're giving feedback and it's just this part sucks or like, I don't like this part or I don't like this character, having those comments are okay. But I think telling why is what's really important. So if it's like this part sucks because X, Y, and Z is way more helpful, important, and better uh, than just saying that it sucks because one thing is just giving an opinion and the other thing is giving like critique and feedback. Um, and I think that that is like a line that we kind of toe. And I think it's just very 
important to to provide that context and that feedback versus just the thought. I have some more links in the description if you want to do some further reading on beta readers, how you can use them, and why they're important to your writing and publishing journey. If you want to check those out, you can click them down below. I hope you found this video helpful for you as you are on your writing and publishing journey. If you found this helpful, please be sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for more writing and bookish content. I hope you all are having an amazing week and I cannot wait to see you in the next one.